What's going on everyone? Welcome back to TTP Sports and the Dallas Stars. They force a Game 6 in the Stanley Cup Final. They win tonight in Game 5 by a score of 3-2. Corey Perry, Joe Pavelski stepping up. The veteran leadership for Dallas stepping up for them in big moments. Corey Perry two goals. Joe Pavelski with a huge goal to tie the game in the third period. And they force a game six, which will be played on Monday night. And now, all the pressure is shifting towards Tampa Bay. Now, they couldn't close it out in game five. They need to close it out in game six because you do not want Dallas forcing a game seven because anything could happen in a game seven. And Tampa Bay has to clinch the Stanley Cup in game six. All the pressure is shifting towards the Tampa Bay side right now, but for Dallas... They set the tone early. They get an early goal. Tampa Bay does score two goals. Second period, third period. Dallas ties it in overtime. The first overtime, I would say, was more favored on the side of Tampa Bay. They were getting more of the chances. Dallas really didn't get much going. They were, really weren't attacking the puck as well. But Anton Hudobin was there to come up clutch for his team in that first overtime. And also in the second overtime, Anton Hudobin with his fantastic toe save on a redirection by Braden Point. I was like, <gasps> I was I was basically in this overtime just going, <gasps> is it going to end? It's it's like one side is going to end, the other side is going to end. Oh my God, what like what's going on right here? I'm just like, oh, is the puck going to end? Is, Sta is Tampa Bay going to lift the Stanley Cup right now in overtime? Or is Dallas going to force a game six? Well, it was the latter and Dallas forces a game six. It is very exciting. Who doesn't love overtime in playoff hockey, especially in the Stanley Cup Final? Exciting. And this series is going to be exciting until the very end. And like I said, for the Tampa Bay side, you do not want Dallas forcing a Game 7. Because like I said, anything can happen in a Game 7, especially in the Stanley Cup Final. And Dallas right now, they have the momentum. They came into this game, they set the tone early on, and it's Corey Perry with, honestly... For Dallas on their side, they shifted a couple of their lines today. Rupe Hints did not play in this game, and they had to shift a couple of the thing of the lines right there, the pairings. But Joe Pavelski on the first line with Jamie Benn, Corey Perry, and Tyler Sagan were paired up right there. And that's the line pairing that gets the first goal going for the Dallas Stars. Tampa Bay tries to clear the puck early. They can't get it out. Dallas keeps it in. Defense hands it off to Tyler Sagan, who makes a nice little neaty pass. To Corey Perry, who comes up on the right side, puts run right by Vasilevsky. And it's a 1-0 Dallas lead almost three minutes into this game. So setting the tone right there, setting the bar early for this game. Dallas goes up 1-0. Tampa Bay, they're getting some chances around the bank. And also for this game, too, in previous games, in the first four games, just penalty after penalty after penalty, especially on the Dallas side. This game in total... Three penalties. I was surprised. I was like, what? There's actually not going to be any penalties called in this game? It, it, it felt odd. It felt like the, every game before then, it was just constant penalty after penalty after penalty. And then especially in game four, after the whole controversial stuff leading to the uh, Tampa Bay overtime winner in game four. And maybe, uh, I w I w I'm not going to bet on this, but maybe the refs decided like, hey, let's let the teams play a little bit more. Let's not uh, consistently call these dumb uh, non-penalties right here. Let's actually let the game move forward at an actual pace. And it, hey, it's a, it was a fun game. It was a very fun game. And like I said, Dallas gets it on the board early. Tampa Bay gets their chances in that first period, but Anton Hudobin's there to make some saves. Also, Andre Vasilevsky coming up big for his team as well. If you look at the shot totals for the first period, Dallas had eight shots. Tampa Bay had ten shots in total. Then we go to the second period. This second period was more Tampa Bay, and that showed early because Tampa Bay, ooh, this goal right here, this goal tied up for Tampa Bay. Pitch perfection by their first line. Braden Point, Nikita Kucherov, Andre Palat. And I just go, oh my goodness, I just I just love it. I love it. I need to see more of this. Braden Point hands it off to Kucherov, who's driving the zone with Palat. Hands it off to Palat, and Palat goes up the right side. Drives the net, backhand there, pass to Dobin. And it's a tie game, one to one. Beautiful goal right there by Andre Palat. Ooh, pitch perfection right there. I love it. I need to see more of it. 
<laughs> I'm going to brunt for a brick wall. That goal was epic right there by Polat. And <laughs> it was it was fun. It, it was a fun game to watch. And through the second period, like I said, I feel like this more... Tampa Bay was getting majority, I would say, of the chances in this second period. It just felt like they were, I would say, more on top of the play in this period. If you look at the shot holes, it definitely describes the story right there. Six shots for Dallas, 13 for Tampa Bay. And Dallas did get some dangerous chances in this period. A couple of slot chances. Really can't get anything by Vasilevsky in this period. They do get a power play in this period. They can't cash in on it. But that comes into the third period, which I will talk about later. So we do go into the third period. It's 1-1 one one right here. And Tampa Bay, once again, they're getting things set up early in this period. And it's the first line once again. You get Braden Point on the left side of the ice. Handing it off to Mikhail Sergachev, who's on the point. He one-times it, screens past Kudobin. And it's a 2-1 to one Tampa Bay lead. And you see Sergachev celebrating in center ice, getting the go-ahead goal. And right there, Tampa Bay has the lead. And they're going to have a chance to possibly close out this game and hoist the Stanley Cup. But then Tampa Bay, halfway through this period, they take a penalty. But actually, before this... Sorelli. Oh my god, this play by Sorelli. <laughs> he didn't score, but it was very close to going in. He has the puck in the slot, and he does a little spinorama shot, and it goes off the pipe. It goes off the left pipe. It, he had Hudobin beat. He just couldn't beat the post, and Tampa Bay was this close to going up 3-1. to one. But in Tampa Bay, like I said, halfway, they take a penalty, and Dallas goes on to the power play. But Dallas... It's not about what happens on the power play. It's what transcribes after the power play. So Dallas can't get anything going. They can't score on this power play. But they get it set up directly after the power play ends. And it's John Klingberg on at the point. Doing his thing. Puts a shot onto the net. Not Klingberg, actually. I'm <laughs> When I'm looking at my stat book, I'm looking at the bottom of the page. And I'm not looking at the third period goal. <laughs> so, it's not Klingberg. It's Miro Heiskinen on the point. He takes the shot, does his thing, gets it onto the net. And you get Joe Pavelski in his office right in front of the net. Putting a screen in front of Andre Vasilevsky. Fighting for that rebound. He gets it. He buries it. And Dallas ties the game at two goals apiece. And you know what? <laughs> Who said this game didn't need overtime? Game four, okay, we went to overtime. I guess this game would just be perfectly settled in overtime as well. Back-to-back -back games, too. It always feels like when there's a back-to-back -back in the Stanley Cup playoffs, especially in, it, like, you never see back-to-backs in Stanley Cup playoffs regardless, but just for this year's playoffs. And mostly the back-to-backs, it always feels like both of those games go to overtime, and I'm just like... This is probably the worst case scenario for teams playing a back-to-back -back, just going to overtimes in both games. It's just like, how taxing does that have to be? Because you go into one overtime in game four. Then you come to the very next night and you play game five. And now you go to a double overtime. I'm just like, what? <laughs> okay, game four just needed one. Okay, we'll settle it with two this time. We'll settle it with two overtimes. <laughs> and the first overtime was more favored to Tampa Bay. Like I said earlier, Tampa Bay favored in the shots. They were getting majority of the chances. Dallas in this peer over first overtime period only had two shots on the net. And their first shot really wasn't registered until I would say over halfway in this overtime period. And that was a shot by Jamie Benn. And there was also chances for Jamie Benn in this overtime too. Two chances, in fact. He had a two-on-one chance, and he decided to pass the puck. You can tell on the replay, he was looking past first the entire time. He tries to pass it off, but gets blocked by the defender, playing the play perfectly. And that's a ruined opportunity right there for Dallas. Jamie Benn then does come back on another chance where he has on the left side wide open. He's not going to miss that shot. He takes it, but Andre Vasilevsky makes the save right there on Jamie Benn. And then Tampa Bay gets a couple of chances. Palat gets a chance. And then you get the Kucherov line. They're getting their chances. And just also Tyler Johnson coming up the right side. Anton Hudobin has to make some saves right there. Tyler Johnson was coming up the right side. And Hudobin got the right paddle on it. And it goes out of play. It was, yeah, Tampa Bay was getting majority of their chances in this period. And then we go into the intermission. Overtime intermission. It's still a tied game. We need double overtime to end this. And it's a fun fact on the Tampa Bay side too. So every series that Tampa Bay won, 
all of their clinching games ended in overtime in their first round against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Remember when they went to five overtimes against them? Well, their final game also went to overtime as well. And they won that series on a goal by Braden Point. In Boston, when they took him in five games, game five went to overtime. Victor Hedman with the goal. In round three against the New York Islanders, game six, that had to be finished in overtime. And now it, it, it was looking like to be a perfect ending to the Tampa Bay Lightning Stanley Cup playoff run. Why not have every round, every clinching game for Tampa Bay to be won in overtime? Well, that was not the story in this game, folks, because Dallas, I would say, in this overtime was more active. They were going to the puck. They were driving in it. They were getting plays on there. And Dallas gets a breakaway. Gurionov gets a breakaway. And he can't do anything with it because you got Victor Hedman coming in right behind him. And he has to take the quick shot. And he misses the net. And it's like, oh, no. And then you get Tampa Bay on the other side when you have an Anton Hudobin making a toe save on a perfect redirection from Braden Point. And if you, like... When you're looking at it live, you really can't tell that much. But then when you see the replay of the shot right there from Sergachev, which deflects off a of Braden Point, and then you see the puck barely go off the toe of Hudobin. Barely goes off the toe. Barely. It's just like by this much, it goes off the toe. And then we go halfway into this overtime. A little bit under halfway. Dallas doing their thing. In the overtime, they're doing their thing in the zone. They're setting up a play. Yeah, Klingberg on the point. He finds a way to get the shot through. It's a little bit of a net mount scramble right here. Corey Perry in front of the net. He's looking for that loose puck. It's still loose in the crease. He's battling, he's battling, he's trying to dig it in. And he eventually finds that loose puck. He buries it. He puts it past Vasilevsky. And Dallas wins this game by a score of 3-2. And they force a game 6, which will be played on Monday. So Dallas, and looking at the press conferences and post-game, Tyler Sagan on the press conference right there, they're having fun. They're <laughs> they're not out yet. They're having fun. And <laughs> right now, they have nothing to lose right now, even though they do have the Stanley Cup to lose. They're, they're playing with nothing to lose. And they played a perfect game right here. This was the second time in these playoffs that Dallas was up for elimination. And the last time they were up for elimination was Game 7 against the Colorado Avalanche in Round 2. And they won that game in overtime. So uh, Dallas, not familiar territory right here. But both elimination games that they have played in, they have won both in overtime. So Dallas <laughs> playing with house money right here for Game 6. Let's see if they can come out the same way that they did in this game. Get an early goal, set the tone. But like I said earlier... All the pressure right now that was on Dallas for trying to force a Game 6, it's now on Tampa Bay to try to finish it in Game 6. Because if Dallas forces a Game 7, oof, that's going to be a scary Game 7 right there for Tampa Bay. And you just, like, the storyline for Tampa Bay right now, you, like, there's a lot of, like, I, I don't mind who wins this cup. I, I would love to see either of these teams win the cup. But then you look at the Tampa Bay side, they're just notorious for blowing it in moments where they shouldn't. They they just haven't been able to get the job done right here. They do have another chance to get the job done in Game 6. But if you look at 2018, where they were up three games to two against the Washington Capitals in Round 3. And they get shut out in Game 6 and 7. And then Washington goes on to win the Stanley Cup. And then you look in 2019, Tampa Bay is the best team in the NHL. 62 win season. Everyone was expecting them to steamroll their way to a Stanley Cup win. Especially steamroll their way past the Columbus Blue Jackets in the first round. And they get swept by the Blue Jackets. And now Tampa Bay, they fall off their demons earlier in the, in the earlier stages of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And they had the chance right here to win the Stanley Cup. Do not let the story continue right there, Tampa Bay. Do not let your past demons come back to haunt you right here. Finish the job if you're a Tampa Bay. But if you're Dallas, keep doing the things you're doing right now. Play the same exact way that you play tonight. Play with that motivation. Get the early goal. Set the tone. Be physical. Get the pucks to the net. Do the same exact stuff that you did today. And like I said for Tampa Bay, don't do it again. Don't let your past demons come back to haunt you in this Stanley Cup Finals. Do not blow it.
because you know a lot of people if Tampa, say if Tampa Bay does blow this they will be known like I'm, I'm not saying this right here right now but if Tampa Bay blows it and I'm not saying it's going to happen you never know though it's the Stanley Cup finals Tampa Bay could be labeled as probably the biggest chokers in Stanley Cup playoff history probably one of the biggest chokers right now they have the chance to scratch that off their name and to win the Stanley Cup in game six they have to do it in game six because like I said you do not want Dallas to force a game seven you just don't so Tampa Bay has a chance to hoist the cup once again on Monday Dallas has a chance to force a game seven on Monday so which is going to happen Honestly, I would root for Game 7 just so we have more hockey to continue. But who knows what will happen in Game 6. Maybe Dallas comes out the same way they do tonight. Maybe Tampa Bay comes out more with a chip on their shoulder. It's going to be an exciting game regardless. So, what are your thoughts on this game right here by the Dallas Stars? What are your thoughts on them forcing Game 6? What are your thoughts on Tampa Bay now with the pressure on their side? What do you think Tampa Bay has to do to try to hoist the cup in Game 6? So I want to hear your thoughts right down in the comment section. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time.